watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Well, before we get started with the review, I need to give a couple of shout outs to a couple of guys. We've got Matt over at Slip Joint Sawyer who recently created a channel. He was a long time commenter on my channel and others. So Matt uh, was encouraged by Patty's Potato Pillars to create a channel and he's done so. And so make sure you're over there and subscribed uh, to him. And he's going strong, and he's got nearly 350 subs now. He's going to be doing a giveaway soon, so make sure you're a part of that activity and you get to take part in that giveaway. Also, we have a sticker from RJ's Lives. We've been waiting for this one for quite some time, so RJ's finally got some stickers made. That's fantastic. If you're not already familiar with RJ, hard to think that you wouldn't be. You go over there and subscribe and he does lots of nice reviews and also has a live on Sundays, 10.30 Pacific Time, in which I take part frequently, along with Tom from Knife Delights and Patty from Pet, Patty's Potato Pillars, and of course RJ himself. And then he also has a couple of rotating guests that he'll bring on, so a lot of fun with those guys each Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's a great show. Make sure you're checking that out again Sundays at 1030 Pacific time. All right, so let's get into the review. All right, so we're going to be looking at the Rough Rider Reserve RRR024 Humpback Jack. This is the packaging that comes in. Got the red logo around its otherwise plain box. China, the country of origin, cancer warning. Model number here, RRR024 Rough Rider Reserve. Comes in a tin, little tube here, tin tube. Got the logo on that, and then also on the lid. And then inside that, you had the knife wrapped in wax paper, and then that is wrapped again in a cleaning cloth. Stuffed in there with some foam. And that's make up your packaging there. So pretty nice, pretty nice packaging. I always like the Rough Rider Reserve packaging. But this is the knife we're looking at, and this is what we really want to focus on. We've got a burlap micarta handle on it. Okay, we got a four and seven eighths inch close length, so just shy of five inches. All right, burlap micarta scales, handles. Pins are brass. Shield is brass. Liners are brass. Got a nickel silver bolster, satin finished with two threads there. So very nice design. All the pins are nice and smooth all the way around. And uh, that shield is well inlaid. Got a nice sheen to it. Well polished. Good look at that micarta. That burlap design. You can see the check pattern, I guess you'd call it, in the in the handle. You don't really feel any uh, of it protruding. It's very, very smoothed out. So there's no added grip or anything on this. Which I wouldn't have mind minded if they'd have made it just a touch rough when they didn't get it 100% smooth. But they opted to just smooth it completely out. Let's look at the other side. You can see that matches really well to the other side. And we've got pin check here. Everything really smooth. So it's very well finished, and I'm not feeling any edginess along the corners there. No sharp edges on the bolster, on the front, or down here. Sometimes you get a little bit of a sharp edge. I'm not feeling that either. The spring is nice and smooth in the closed position there. And you can see there's no gaps. Looks pretty darn good, guys. Pretty happy with the build on that. All the way across. Get a better angle on this side. But you can see that hump in the handle, and of course that's how they got the name for the for the knife, the humpback jack. But essentially it's just a granddaddy barlow, you know, which are typically five inches. This is just shy of that. Now they offer this knife in two versions. They have the D2 satin blade, which is what I got. And they also offer the Damascus version. Now, 
This is D2 blade steel, and I don't know what the other blade steel is. I didn't look into that. I'm not really interested in the Damascus, but there is quite a price hike when you go up to the Damascus blade. The normal price for this one with the D2 is just over that $50 price mark, so it gets into that premium level of review for me. But it's $55.79 on Chicago Knife Works, and then you can you can upgrade to that Damascus one for $79.29. Now, Smoky Mountain Knife Works also offers this knife, obviously, but it's $65 for this one and then $90 for the Damascus one. So this is quite a bit cheaper on Chicago Knife Works, and that's where I would recommend you get it. But if we take a look at this satin finish D2 steel blade, you get a measurement with full to the tang three and five eighths inches and then we have a cutting edge of about three and three eighths um, nice satin finish on the blade this seems to be a flat grind from what I can tell you've got the Rough Rider Reserve logo as your tang stamp and then on the reverse you get the model number there RRR024, and then D2, so the blade steel designation, the country of origin, China. But yeah, it's a ram's foot blade. It gets a little broader at the tip, so we would classify that as a ram's foot. Now, marketing's going to tell you it's a sheep's foot, but that's not as accurate as I would say the ram's foot would be. Now you've got a swedge here. You can see that on both sides. Just a just a mild swedge there, and then you got a nail nick with the match strike pull. So those little grooves and the nail nick. But it's a nice satin finish blade. Nice spine to it. See how that tapers to the tip. So pretty nice blade stock on there. Take a look at the blade edge. Yeah, pretty even. Not too shabby. A little heavier on this side, I think. It's not quite as even as it could be. Definitely think it's heavier on this side. Let's take a little cutting test. See how we work out with that. Oh, yeah. Like all the Rough Rider Reserve line uh, that I've bought have always been pretty sharp right out of the box. So I'm pretty happy with that. We do have a half stop on this. All right. And I'll just let you guys listen to the... walk and talk yeah very snappy pretty happy with that I'd say it's about a seven pull on there which is ideal and of course with the granddaddy barlow that's to me very very key it has to have a pull that's strong enough otherwise I don't have any confidence in, the, in a knife this size with no locking mechanism right so you're not going anywhere with that I feel like that's a very adequate pull on that it makes this a a true user and not one that's going to fold down on you just using day to day so I'm happy with that I like that the handle design I think that the burlap is attractive would have liked to seen a little more texture in it maybe just not smoothed it over as much right and left a little bit of that burlap feel but as it is it's not bad it's still very easy to grip Massive handle on it, so you're not going to have any problem holding on to it. Still have plenty of room left over, even with my medium-sized hand here. So, should have no problem, even with a larger hand, getting a good grip on this guy. Plenty of handle length. And again, I just I think the critical part of the knife is that it has a strong pull. Because um, with a blade this long, you don't want that to fold over on you. And really not one that you would use with, you know, like a finger choil or anything. So you're not going to prevent that blade from folding down on you unless it's got a decent spring on it. And it seems to have that. So pretty happy with that. But overall, I think that the fit and the finish and the, the size of the knife is very much like a Granddaddy Barlow. It fits well into my collection of Granddaddy Barlows. Nice to see that Rough Rider Reserve has decided to make another single bladed knife which is kind of one of my preferences for what they produce so happy with that and i just think that 
The overall knife is really well designed and the fit and finish is fantastic. D2 blade steel. I think the price is reasonable for the size of the knife you're getting. You know, right in that $56 range on Chicago Knife Works. So just barely into the premium level of knife. Comes with some nice uh, packaging and so forth. So you're you're getting some extras here. So yeah, just a uh, overall pretty well designed knife and you're getting a lot I think for your money but that's going to do it for my review guys I hope you enjoyed it make sure you like subscribe hit that bell to be made aware of videos when they come out we'll see you next time take care